going to be making this braided wheat blanket. This pattern comes in lots of different sizes in the ad free PDF. And I also have a size on the blog to get you started. The wonderful thing about this blanket, my favorite part is we are going to work this as one piece, including the border. So we're not going to come back and do the border later. The border is worked with this blanket. So there's no need to come back and do that. It's a one piece blanket with that nice edging. For this, I use the color theory two of wands in the color uh, moonbeam. I love this color. I've used it for lots of designs. It's just really, really pretty. Um, but you can really make this in any type of yarn that you want. But uh, this is a four worsted weight yarn to get this gauge. But once again, when it comes to blankets, you can always adjust easier than you can with uh, size garments because we have a lot of wiggle room there if you want to try a different weight of yarn. Today I'm going to be making a small sample of this in the Pima cotton um, just to do a smaller like lovey size on camera to walk through each step. You'll want a tape measure for this, especially if you're checking your gauge or looking at sizing for the blanket, scissors to cut those ends, a yarn needle to weave them in. A stitch marker is never a bad idea. It's always a good idea to have those around to mark the ends of each row so that you can keep track of where you are. And let's go ahead and jump right in with our five millimeter H hook and we'll make this gorgeous stitch pattern. Now today on camera, I will be making the lovey size, which is about 12 by 12 inches. I'm going to be using this cotton yarn because while I don't have little ones around this house anymore for a lovey blanket, because I'm going to be using a cotton, I can use this as a washcloth. But all these instructions can apply to the larger sizes. Like I said, in the ad free PDF, I have, I think about 16 uh, sizes available and this is really easy to adjust. So we're going to start with a slip knot on our hook and then for the lovey size, we are going to chain 46. Now we've chained 46, which is the appropriate amount of chains for this size, but we will also want to add a turning chain. So we're going to add one more for a turning chain, which will mean that we have 47 chains here. Now we're going to start by single crocheting in the second chain from the hook. And I like to do this into those back humps. And then we're going to single crochet into each stitch across. So at the end of row one for this size, we will have a total of 46 single crochet stitches and our stitch count is going to remain the same for the rest of this blanket. We'll have turning chains and then our stitch count will be 46 stitches. Now after doing row one, we are going to turn our work and begin row two and row two through, two through eight will be the same repeat. We're going to start with chaining one and that's our turning chain. It does not count as a stitch. And then we are going to be working into those back loops only. Now, when it comes to the back loops, we would normally enter a stitch underneath both loops. But when we're working just the back loop, we will only enter the stitch through that back loop. And this is what causes that ribbing look effect on the edge of this blanket. So we will simply single crochet in the back loop only for each stitch across. So our stitch count will not change. And this is what we will be doing for rows two through eight. We're just single crocheting in the back loop only. It's creating that very first edge border. Now you can make this thicker or thinner by adding more rows or doing less rows. It's completely up to you and customizable along these edges for the border. So now we worked rows one through eight, working the single crochet in the back loop only. And we're going to turn our work and start row nine. Now at the beginning and end of each row, we're going to be working the edging stitches and those are going to be the single crochet in the back loop only. So I'm going to chain one and tighten it and then single crochet in the back loop only for eight stitches. Now you can do more or less stitches to make this um, edge border wider or thinner. Now after working those first eight stitches, this is where we're going to start working our puff stitches into um, these next until we get to the last eight stitches of the row, which will once again work in that single crochet in the back loop only. To do these stitches, we are going to skip the next stitch and single crochet into the next. And then we are going to go back to that skipped stitch and work a modified puff. So we will yarn over, go into the skip stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop and be sure to pull these up to the height of the loop on the hook. 
we want to have some uh, nice puffy definition here. Then we're going to yarn over again, go back into the same skip stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. And now we have five loops on the hook. We are going to yarn over and pull through four and then yarn over and pull through two to complete that stitch. And that's what we're going to be doing all the way across. So we'll skip one and single crochet in the next. Working back to that skip stitch, we will do that modified puff. And we'll keep doing that. We'll repeat that all the way across until we get to the last eight stitches of this row. And now that we are to the last eight stitches of the row, we will single crochet those into that back loop only. And you don't want to make these too tight because we want it to sit nicely and not um, pull too much in on each edge. And now we're going to turn our work. And for row 10, we are simply repeating row nine where we will chain one and single crochet in the back loop only for the first eight stitches and then work those puff stitches. And I'm going to show you those one more time working back this other direction. So after single crocheting in the first eight in the back loop only, we are going to skip the next stitch and single crochet into the next and then work back to that skip stitch and do that modified puff stitch. And we'll just repeat that all the way across until the last eight stitches where we will single crochet into that back loop only. And this is where we can start to see that puff stitch come together and look really nice. This is the right side of our row. So we're able to see how this is going to look. And now after working row 10, we're going to turn our work and chain one and we're going to be working rows 11 through 12. And those are super simple because they are just single crocheting in the back loop only for each stitch across. And that's for rows 11 and 12. And now we've completed rows 11 through 12 and we're going to start to do a four row repeat. So we're going to repeat rows nine through 12 until we have 26 total body rows. So the body rows do not include the first um, eight rows of this, which are an edge row. So we're going to be doing 26 total. That means that when we do that, we will be ending on a row 10. So the last rows we will work will be those puff rows, and then we'll go to the next section. So I'm gonna work that up and show you what that looks like. So now I have done 26 rows of the body, which has us end on these puff stitch rows. And we're now going to start to do the other side. So it's the same thing we did over here to finish it out on the other side. We are simply going to turn our work and for eight rows, we will single crochet into that back loop only. And that will make it look the way that we started it along this edge. So single crochet in the back loop only for eight rows. And now you, once you've worked those eight rows, we have finished this off. You can go ahead and fasten off your yarn and weave in that end. And then the next step would be to block this. With blankets, they always look better blocked. It just evens out the rows, evens out the stitches. So you wanna go ahead and do a light block usually. You can do a wet block. I haven't really found it's as necessary for this one. I just sprayed mine and blocked it to mats to the dimensions uh, for the blanket and it looked really nice. Now, whether you're making the smaller lovey size or you're doing something a bit larger, there are lots of sizes in the Add Free PDF for you to decide what you want. For your home, this is such a squishy blanket that will keep you warm all season long and the stitch is just to die for. So I really hope you enjoy creating this crochet blanket. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back for more fun tutorials soon.